situation is you receive your doctor's orders and uh, your doctor's telling you that you need to give your patient oxygen. So, first of all, what? Um, oxygen is a medication because it has a dosage and, you know, putting too much or too little oxygen in your patient can affect the outcome of them. So, first what you'll do is you'll take your oxygen and it, you'll have an MAR, so you're going to go into the oxygen room, you're going to check the stand first, you want to make sure that it doesn't, you don't want to fall over or anything like that. Um, you don't know how long the oxygen's been sitting there, so what you want to do is it's called cracking the tank, and you blow some air out. And the reason why you do that is to get any dust or anything that may be stuck in the little hole when it adapt or you attach it to your regulator. So, um, also when uh, you put a regulator on, there's just two kinds. Uh, you have basically your simple, and then you have one that's a little more complex. And so, starting with the regular or the simple, it only goes up to about five liters of oxygen. So clearly, if you have to put in six or up, you'd have to use another regulator. Um, that one. Uh, goes up to 15, and it also has an adapter for humidification. And such as, or with these regulators, you can also uh, use a wall mount. And you can actually attach them to a wall in a patient's room. So, once you've chosen your regulator, you're going to go ahead and put it on your oxygen tank. And um, how you do that is one side's going to have these prongs. Um, it's kind of hard to see right here, but there's prongs on one side of the regulator, and you want to make sure that it's on the side with the holes that would be corresponding with it on the oxygen tank. And once you have, you want to pass it around? Oh, sure. Uh, we'll pass it around. You can see the prongs right there, and you know it's got leaders in the dials and stuff. Those are the prongs go on the side of the with the two holes on it, and you'll see when you're looking at your oxygen okay. tank. Yeah. And so uh, once you put on your regulator, uh, you want to make sure that it, uh, the regulator is working, so you're going to turn on your oxygen. And you also want to make sure there's actually oxygen in the tank because, I mean, obviously it's no use if you don't have any. Okay, and you just want to open it. I don't know. Do I increase the stream? You keep going. Okay, well, um, and s like I said, uh, oxygen is a medication, so you'll need to do your uh, five rights and three checks, just like you would with any other medication. And so, uh, once you have your oxygen prepared, um, then you'll also need supplies, you know, to do, because you'll need to check vital signs, and you'll need to do a respiratory assessment. So you'll need, like, your blood pressure cuff, if it's not in there, you know, stethoscope. <coughs> Things for basic assessment. Okay, and then uh, once you have all your supplies, then you'll be ready to go to your patient's room. Okay. Okay, so you're going to get your patient's info on your little label. You're going to check and make sure you have the right room. The first thing you're going to do is put your fire hazard sign on the door. You're also going to put one at the foot of the bed when you go inside. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, oxygen is one of the three main pieces of a fire. Um, and so you can't smoke, or for example, if you smoke while on oxygen, it can, uh, if you inhale like an ember or anything like that, it can start a fire. So if you have like your nasal cannula on and you're smoking and you breathe in an ember, you can char the entire inside of your airway. So you gotta have our warning signs up. Okay. So you go in your patient's room, you put your hand wash, stuff like that. Two patient identifiers. Okay. And after you all that, first thing you're gonna do is your full uh, respiratory assessment with vital signs. So you want to prop them up in a high phalanx position unless contraindicated. <laughs> and so your vital signs are going to include your blood pressure, your pulse ox, your uh, pulse rate, your respiratory rate, and you're going to all state all sounds, and you're going to be checking for rhythm and the depth of each breath. on this pole box. Okay, uh, his O2 sat is 87. And so that's uh, abnormally low. And uh, we want to try and keep that O2 sat at least over 92. So now we know why we're probably giving him oxygen.
check the blood pressure. <coughs> Blood pressure is 130 over 90. Okay. Can you do your pulse and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> the pulse is 86. Okay. <laughs> and then you're going to do your full respiratory assessment. <clears throat> Counting breath, watching the rhythm. Yeah. So you're going to do all five on the front, the uh, three lateral sounds, and then the five on the back. <coughs> The long sounds? Uh -huh. It's the same as your health assessment? You're gonna have, yeah, you're going to have the five on the front, mm -hmm. then the three lateral deep sounds on the sides, and then the fi same five on the back. sides. You also look for signs of hypoxia. Uh, oh yes, and so, um, signs of hypoxia would include um, cyanosis of course, uh, blue skin, um, if they're acting really restless. And uh, you can also do lab work which would uh, be checking your ABGs, which is, stands for arterial blood gases. That's a lab that you can do to see um, if they're having signs and symptoms of hypoxia. So, um, after you've done that, you also want to check the bag, of course. And so you don't want to lay them down and roll them over like you usually would because uh, it's probably easier to breathe and they're in distress, so you just want to prop them up. And just... <laughs> So, listening to his lung sounds, uh, people who need oxygen, they tend to have, uh, they're either struggling with their breathing, or it's really weak, or, you know, it's definitely labored in some <coughs> so. Okay. Once you've done your first <clears throat> full assessment, you're going to uh, check your oxygen equipment. You're going to set the correct, it's on the app. And you would check your doctor's order if you need humidification or not. And since you don't, this one needs a little Christmas tree adapter. It's that little green triangle. Okay, and that's where you're going to put your uh, O2 device on. Okay, so you're going to set the, the uh, dosage. And you always want to have your oxygen on before you even want to think about putting it on your face shake because you don't want to put it on and it, them not be getting anything because they can maybe suffocate them. So. so he turns that on. First thing he's going to do, he's going to check for skin integrity, and you're going to want to look at the nares of uh, both nostrils. Then you're going to want to check the cheek and behind the ears. Okay? <laughs> okay so everything's clear. Um, I don't see any break in skin integrity or anything like that. So, um, as Saul, or do you want to go ahead and tell me? Oh, yeah, that's your turn, yeah. yeah well, I don't know if we're going to talk about this one. So we're going to talk about the different kinds of delivery systems that we have. I'm going to do the nasal cannula. Which is what he's putting out right now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if you see this, this has two prongs. I don't know if y'all, yeah, we'll probably pass this one around. And they're kind of curved like this. I, I said they look like veins. But you want that to point towards the back because, of course, you don't want it to be pointing up like this. You'll dry out all the nose. So this... If you can see on a little chart, if you can't, you can look on page 44 of your little skills book. It can give from 1 to 2 meters with oxygen percent of 24 to 28 percent, 2 to 4, or 3 to 4 liters, 32 to 36 percent, and of course 5 to 6, 40 to 44 percent. But after 4, 
You don't want to really use this because it really dries out all the mucosa in there. But the good thing about this is it's real easy. You don't have to take it off to eat. And that's about it on this. Okay, so he's assessed the skin integrity. He's going to be using the nasal cannula. You're going to uh, put both prongs facing down into the nose. And then the cord just goes right over the ears. Once you get it on, it has a little facet down at the bottom. You want to pull it up, but not too tight, just at a comfortable spot. And then hopefully you have a safety pin or something, because then you want to actually uh, attach that to their gown in case they're rolling over. They're not going to pull it out or roll on top of it, stuff like that. Okay. So uh, once you've actually applied the oxygen to your patient, you're going to need to do another respiratory assessment to see if the oxygen is actually helping your patient. Got the pulse off. <coughs> So you'd want to, and um, for doing oxygen scenarios, you can always leave a pulse ox on because it's a constant meter of uh, how their oxygen's doing. Say you're doing something that's stressing them and their oxygen's going lower, or you can see that they're actually improving. Is a O2 stat has actually gone up to 94%. And you want most patients, you want their oxygen or their O2 stat to be at least above 92%. And how long do you wait after putting the oxygen on before you reassess? Um, I mean, as soon as you have it on, I'm you're pretty sure you can start checking. You said 92%? At least above 92. If not, usually that's when they need oxygen. Okay, and then uh, once you've done your you want to come back up? Oh, yeah. um, once you've done your assessment um, and you see that everything's been improving, well, you'll need to come back and check every two hours to make sure that the oxygen tank has air in it. Uh, make sure it's still on the dosage that you're supposed to have it on. Um, also, this time you can of course check like skin integrity of the skin. Uh, around the face. Uh, sometimes, like Saul said, that the nose can be dried out by a nasal cannula. So what you want to use is a lubricant, but you want to use a water base instead of an oil base, clearly because oil base would be flammable and, you know, you don't want them catching on fire. <laughs> and so uh, once you you come back every two hours, you also want to check every four hours. You want to check your doctor's orders to see if the uh, dosage has changed, if he wants to take them off or anything like that. Um, let's see. Also, uh, with the humidification, or um, your doctor will specify if they want it to be humidified water or not. And what that simply means is that if they want moisture in the air that they're receiving. Um, and as far as changing these, they come in a pre wrap pack. They have sterile water in them. Uh, you check your policy and procedures to see uh, how you change it, when you change it, and such like that. Um, it's real simple. Of course, you want to put it on the regulator that we're specifying, the, the more complex one. Um, it simply screws on and then uh, you attach the hose to the other end, and then it's just, you know, like connecting the pipes. So I'll just pass that around. And see. So after you've done that, um, make sure you see it'll start bubbling. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, once you have it on to know that it's actually working, uh, the water will start to bubble, or showing that the air will be there. And then if there's, like, water collecting somewhere, maybe at the bottom of the hose, um, the simple way to get rid of that is to simply uh, take off the cannula and pour it into the trash can. So, um, so after you've done all of your uh, assessment with your patient and applied the oxygen, then you're, of course, you're going to wash your hands, and then you're going to leave and go document. And then when you document for oxygen, uh, usually what you want to do is uh, document, like, the first impression of how you saw them, if they were having trouble breathing, if they looked panicked, restless, anything like that. Um, you also want to, of course, document your first assessment, what their base was, you know, the O2 and all that. And then you also want to do the post-assessment, uh, you want to document that as well. Um, 
Oh, and what type of oxygen, or like what kind of oxygen, what kind of device, uh, if it had a humidification on it, anything like that. Also the liters. So. And that's how you would apply oxygen to a patient. Okay, and there are a bunch of different devices that you can use other than the, the nasal cannula, so maybe I'll tell you about some of them. Oh, okay. Uh, so the, the first one I have here is called um, a simple face mask, and um, it usually goes on like this. <coughs> I don't know how clean this one is, but, but it goes on, and this goes to the back of the head, and uh, of course this is attached to your uh, tank. Um, uh, for this one, uh, the, what you need to know about it is it's used for short-term uh, oxygen therapy, and um, it usually gives you like um, uh, five to six liters per minute at 40 percent, and uh, six to seven liters per, per minute at um, uh, 50 percent, and uh, seven to eight liters per minute at um, 60 percent. And uh, you have to remove it, of course, to feed the patient. Um, but um, uh, so that's simple face mask. Uh, next one is called. Hmm? Oh, sure. I'll pass it around so you can see it. Contraindicated. Uh, it's contraindicated for people who have um, uh, CO2 retention. That is, if they can, um, if they can do away with the CO2 in their body efficiently. If you use that, they're probably going to get CO2 poisoning. Um, so the next one is called the Venturi mask. And uh, you, you can tell the difference between it and the simple mask. It has this um, This is called the reservoir mask, or the rebreather, and to inflate this, you have to put your thumb right here, and it just inflates the bag. You have to come back and check it to make sure the bag has not been deflated. This delivers um, a high percentage of oxygen. But the patient is breathing a lot of CO2. In. You must remove this to eat. You want to make sure that it stays three fourths full. Yeah. yeah. The bag. The bag. The bag has to stay three fourths full. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At 10 liters per minute, it gives you 70% oxygen. I'm sorry, get nervous. It's okay. And the face tent, this is kind of weird looking. They wear it, like they put their chin right here. 
goes on like that, and it's like looking <coughs> cumbersome. It gives you eight to ten liters per minute, and it ranges from thirty to one hundred percent oxygen. And it's good human humidity and fairly precise FiO two. Yep. Yep. Can you flake that bag? You would hold the little opening. She said at the beginning. Yeah. No, yeah, in the inside. On the inside. Cover it with your thumb. Uh, and it's an air right in the mask. You know, <laughs> bag. Oh, yeah. that's the face tent. All right, this right here. I don't know if y'all remember. This is in the same spirometer. This is technically usually done like before and after surgery to make sure the lungs are still at the level that they were before they went in. So what you do is you take a deep breath in. You got to try to hold it here, and this is going to be rising, rising, rising. And then you get it to where you get it. And that's your level. Say you get it to 2,500 before you go in. You do it again. The doctor tells you how often to do it. Usually it's about... Uh, every hour, on the top of the hour, they just want to make sure you're alveolized or opening, so you won't, it's to prevent pneumonia, so you can actually, it'll help you keep breathing, right, and you won't have to <laughs> prevent further complications, so you do this before and after surgery, and just like that, you just repeat it, make sure you take your time between breaths, you don't want to pass out after doing it like 20 times. <laughs> And you breathe in, not blow. You don't blow at it. You actually breathe in. You move that down. You have to. It's like you're smoking a pipe. <laughs> Just like that. It's true personal experience. Not that I'm smoking a pipe. <laughs> Slowly, slowly. If you do it fast, it looks like a pipe, you will come. You don't want this to just go go up and down right away. It's like the name kind of tells you. I don't know, that's how I remember. Maybe it'll help you. But, yeah. Great example. Now we're going to move on to oral airway and suctioning. So, you're just going to want to Need to sign for him. Can you speak up, please? Oh, sorry. You're just going to want to tape it along the cheek and wrap it around the airway and then put it along the other cheek. And so after you do that, you're going to want to do a full respiratory assessment again, um, which would be your blood pressure. <coughs> um, and you're going to put your pulse wax on. Right after you insert your forearm, yeah, yeah. you need to do a 
respiratory And make sure they're still okay. okay. So make sure that they're no, What is this device used for? What typically? Yeah. 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 It's like an unconscious it's attempt. It's choking on their tongue. Uh, choking it, on keeps tongue. <coughs> it keeps the tongue in place. So now you're going to want to do mm -hmm. your lung Because your oral airway has to be changed at least once a day, so that's how long you how you know. Are we doing the respiratory assessment before we play the blood? Well, it's kind of like this is kind of like if they're choking, you don't have that. This is kind of like yeah. This is an emergency situation. So you kind of do assess, but you like do it quickly. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as you insert the oral airway, you need to. Because usually they do have like some type of oxygen or something because they're unconscious. Okay. So after you put that in, there's a good chance you're going to need, they're going to have some secretions back there and you're going to need to do some suctioning. So you wash your hands, put on some gloves, put you are good. And then for the suctioning, you're going to have one of this thing back here. You're going to have a yucca tip, a specimen cup, and then your canister. Before you do it, you're going to need to fill the specimen cup with 100 ml of water. Over here, you're going to attach <coughs> this just to this tube. And then I'm going to turn it, I'm not going to leave it on the whole time, but I'm just going to show you. There's just a switch over here. And you would suction up half of your water, so 50 ml before you ever suction them. And that's just to make sure it's working. Okay, you're just checking to make sure this is working. Then um, you're going to just insert it into the mouth. You're going to suction out all that you can suction out. You don't want to leave it in there for a really long time, but get a good amount out. Then you're going to rinse it again, and then you're going to put a t piece of tape with um, name, date, time of or whatever. And uh, that's going to show you, that's for your intakes and outputs, because that's what's coming out of the secretion. Um, so mm -hmm. when you do that, then after you suction, you're going to keep this in a safe place, but you're going to use this again because you're going to have to keep doing it. So you can put it under the pillow, you can put it in the top drawer, whatever you want to do. And then right after you suction, you need to do another full respiratory analysis. So you do all their lung sounds. And you're going to make sure when you've done your, right after you put this in, when you do that assessment, you're going to hear like the gurgling and crackling. That's how you know that there's stuff in there that you need to suction out. So when you do, after you suction, you want to do another one so you can listen to the lungs and see if you need to do more suctioning. So, we'll listen to him. Were you going to say something? I was going to say, the yawn for you don't just place, you put it back in the sleeve. And then oh, you the put plastic it, it came out of it. And then you put it under the pillow or back in the drawer. I would okay. just leave it connected. I would leave it connected to the tubing and put it back in the sleeve. Oh, Jan told us to. We can. You can do. You can do either way. But if you need, if you need it right away, yeah, you only have to pull it out okay. of the sleeve. Well, so we're just going to say that now he's doing good and we don't need to do any more suctioning, but we do need to do some oral care. So you're going to put your towel so that we don't get it all over him. And then you're going to use this glycerin swab. And you're just going to stick it in the tube. Okay, you're just going to get back here and clean it out. You're going to clean and their gums, right behind their teeth, the way that you would brush them. Um, and then they're going to be in supine. And if they have a lot of secretions, you just can't get it all out. You can turn their head to the side and put the towel under them so that it'll just drain out. Because you can't be constantly sitting there suctioning. But you need to do it. As often, and then you're going to clean their teeth as often as you suction them. So, um, <coughs> that's about it for oral care. Take it. Yeah, I said that. She said that already. This is, yeah, this is going to be changed once a day. So that's why you have your um, name, date, time initial on the tip. And that's when you would suction and clean them out. Mm -hmm. Take that out. Mm -hmm. And then um, you're going to take your gloves off. Wash your hands, and then you're going to go document. 
And what you want to document is their skin integrity when you walked in and their state when you walked in the room. Then you're going to insert the oral airway and you need to document their respiratory status and their vitals at that point. <clears throat> then you're going to document the suction, their respiratory and vitals after you suction, and um, that's all. And that you did some oral care. <clears throat> uh, we just have one last thing. When you are done with oxygen and you're going to be putting up all your supplies, of course this has been on, so there's going to be some air in the regulator. So when you, what you want to do is you want to turn it off, make sure it's sealed off, and then you want to make it, it's called bleeding the tank. And so what you do is you just turn up the dosage and you just let the air come out. And obviously you'd want to do it from where you set your dilate or your dosage instead of doing it um, at the actual point of connection because... Um, you heard the little bit, little bit of air, but if you do it from right here, it sounds much more dramatic. So you have more air, and so if you had a spark or something, it would be a huge explosion, you know, rather than a little. Could you do that again? That sure. that you again? So um, after you have it on, uh, of course you want to turn off the oxygen first. And then what you do is you let the remaining air that's in the regulator come out by just turning it at the uh, point where you set the dosage. And you hear a little, you'll hear the air bleed out that way. And then make sure it's all out. And then you tighten it, or make sure everything's closed, and then you can uh, go ahead and take off your regulator. And that's pretty much it. And we, pretty, we also, one more thing, we brought y'all a little something. Everybody take a deep breath. We brought y'all free oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most important. <laughs>